holder of Eden. In any country, anywhere but any city, go to any abandoned railroad crossing you can find. Once you reach these tracks on the road, begin walking on the tracks that go to your left. After approximately two miles, an old man on a pushcart will slowly make his way up behind you. You will hear him coming, but do not turn until he stops behind you. Once he has stopped, turn and look at nothing but his shoes. He will ask if you want a ride. Accepting is the correct response. Otherwise, they will get you on your walk back to the road. After he offers you a ride, you may look around freely. You should see an old Native American man wearing a white button-down shirt, black suspenders, worn black slacks, and polished black shoes. If his hair is in a braided ponytail, you will be free to continue your quest. If it is not, however, you would be advised to make like a tree and leaf. At this point, you should get up on his cart and stand opposite him, in front of the push lever. He will ask if you will help him push the cart. Do so, and your hands will stay connected with the cart for the rest of eternity, and you will take his place as the guide to the holder. Instead, stand patiently for five seconds and then cross your arms over your chest. Ask, can I be taken to where we started? The man will begin to push the cart in the direction you were walking. The cart will begin to move faster and faster until everything around you is just a tunnel of blurred color. While this is going on, the man will begin humming old hymns. You will be tempted to sing along, even if you don't know them. But you must resist, or you will be hurled from the cart. After what seems like an eternity, the cart will come to an abrupt stop in the middle of a vast field. As soon as the cart stops, you must take your eyes off of the man. Turn to your right and leap as far into the field as you can. As soon as you land, the cart will burst into flames and disappear, leaving you alone in the field. This is a crucial part of your journey. From where you landed, take exactly eight steps away from where the cart was. Then proceed in a diagonal left direction. After ten steps, it will become hard for you to walk, but you must push on. After twenty steps, it will feel as if you are about to fall apart. Push on. After thirty steps, no matter your willpower, you will fall to your knees. In front of you will appear an ancient gate, accompanied by never-ending walls on either side. The gate will open and you will be free to stand and go in. But before you enter, a robed clergyman will come through the gates towards you. He will ask for you to repent, seeing as the area beyond the gate is a pure and holy place. If you wish to continue on, do what he says. You must confess your sins. He will then help you into the garden beyond the gate and disappear. In the center of the garden you will find a beautiful man and woman lying next to each other on a pedestal, both unclothed. No matter the weather or time of day outside, it will be night in the garden, and the only light will seem to emanate from their bodies. It is safe to approach them, but do not touch. Stand next to the man and look into the sky. There you will see a small light flickering in the sky. It will descend until it sits in front of your face. From this dust-like speck of light, 
You will hear a voice that is so powerful that you feel as if your bones themselves might break at the sound. It will tell you that to continue, you must take from the man what was used to make the woman. Produce the scalpel of eternity and do what needs to be done. Do not fret. The bodies have been there for a long time. There will be no mess. When you are done, turn back to the small light and offer thanks. If it acknowledges your appreciation, then you will be transported back to the railroad crossing, safe with the object. If it does not, Prepare to be trapped in the garden forever, a conscious statue in the place where you now stand. The man's rib is object 262 of 538. They were there for the making, and they will be there for the unmaking.